A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about what to do when you're feeling discouraged by your business finances. I was super vulnerable and transparent about so much that has happened in my business just this year. And one of those things was raising my prices. Have you ever played that game with yourself? The one where you get in your head about your value or your worth, or if you just simply know in your gut that you're over or under charging about one of your service offerings? Yep, me too, which is why I am sharing this story with you today. I wish that I could be brewing you a cup of coffee and we could just curl up on my couch and just get real with each other. That's basically what we're gonna do. In January, I went through a hiring spree. I hired a content copywriter, a YouTube editor, a virtual assistant, an OBM, and two new assistant bookkeepers. Needless to say, this shot my expenses through the roof. However, my revenue was still high enough that it was covering my expenses at this time. I was paying my tax payments and paying myself what I wanted to. But a couple of months before I went on this hiring spree, I knew that I needed to raise my prices. So I started kind of thinking about what that was gonna look like. Mind you, I have not raised my prices in the three years that I've been in business. So I was like, okay, cool. It is time for my prices to match the high demand of my business and also the high level quality of work that we have perfected and honed over those three years. So when I sent out the email to my clients about the price increase, I gave them a stepladder timeline. So for the first three months of the year, they were grandfathered into their current price. The next three months of the year, it is increased slightly. And then about six months into the year, they are at their current, the actual market price for the rest of the year. Seven clients left, seven, a massive chunk of revenue. And to be completely honest, I cried after each one. Whether it was a Voxer or text or an email, I just felt so defeated and discouraged. And this was also around the same time that I had just turned down a partnership that was going to poise my business to grow exponentially over the next few years. And I still had all of these overhead expenses from my hiring spree at the beginning of the year. But I knew in my gut that this is the right price and that the right people would need me and find me if I continued marketing and selling ethically and consistently. But also in the course of talking and listening to the clients that had left, I knew that they also needed a value increase if the price was going to increase by that much. So I was big enough to say, I need to actually decrease the price. We all talk about raising our rates, which I did. I went from here to here, and then I went to here. And I said, you know what? You guys are my OG clients. I honor you, I hear you. I respect you. I'm going to leave it at this middle of the ground price. And I'm also going to add some value to show you that I actually really truly care about you. So I added visual reports, which we are actually just rolling out this month and quarterly financial analysis videos, where this is a customized video of me walking through your reports, where you're spending too much and what your revenue trends are. I can also answer questions to like, can I afford to hire someone or invest in XYZ mastermind or course or whatever? Those are really fun questions to answer. But for everyone new, that market value price is it. Because I believe in that price. It's not just the time that it takes for us to get your bookkeeping done every single month. It's knowing exactly how to do it accurately and years and years of career work and experience to understand how to do it properly. My lead bookkeeper, Whitney, once said, bookkeeping is like knitting. You are only a great knitter when you know how to fix your mistakes. And it's true. You're not paying an electrician for his or her time. You're paying them to know which cord to cut. Okay, enough with the analogies, but you get my point. So up until now, I've really just told you that I had this gut feeling of what my prices should be. I had a little bit of weigh-in from coaches or business besties that I talked to about what that price should be, but I really knew in my gut what it should be. But if you want to take a more logical or factual approach, let's keep a couple of these things in mind when we are raising our prices. Number one, what is the time spent on the project? How much time, how many hours do you spend on this project? And what is your hourly rate that you really would like to kind of stick to? Number two, what are the direct costs associated with this project? For me, my direct costs are my bookkeepers. So my clients are paying me and I'm paying my bookkeepers to do that work, even though I still review their work. Number three is overhead costs. 
For me, that is my virtual assistant, my OBM. Whether I have any clients pay me, I still have to pay those expenses. Number four, how much do you want to pay yourself? We wanna make sure that our revenue is high enough that we are still paying our direct cost, our overhead cost, and ourselves. Number five is the industry standard. Look to the right, look to the left, see what everyone else is charging for this, but also keep in mind that you do not need to make decisions based off of what somebody else is charging because you could have been in business longer or shorter than them. You may have stronger systems than them. You may have a completely different career that was many, many years before you actually started your business. So there's much more to take into account, but at least take a look at what your competitors are charging. And number six, last but not least, what is the demand on your business and what is your established trust and authority in your industry? This one is just simple economics. What is the supply and demand? If you have tons of leads coming in all the time and you have a lot of demand on your time, your capacity, and your team, if you have one, then you can afford to raise your prices. And then also take into account your established trust and authority. How much time have you invested into giving people value, into teaching and educating and developing relationships with people who may or may not ever be a client of yours? That level of care does deserve a rate increase. Friend, I sincerely hope this video was helpful for you. It was extremely vulnerable for me, but I believe that the more that we have this conversation, the more we can feel confident when we're making these really crucial decisions in our business, especially in a time when inflation is crazy. We all have really high expenses. We're all kind of holding a little bit tighter to our own dollars. These types of conversations give us this, this much more confidence when it comes to that. And that is all that I can ask for. I hope you stick around, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.